Hello, my name is Kathy Barker from Software Solutions and this is the first of a series of videos about what's new with Outlook 2010. Now the thing you'll notice straight away when you open Outlook 2010 is the interface is very different from previous versions of Outlook. Let's have a look at the screen. In the very top left of the screen you see a little toolbar. This is known as the Quick Access Toolbar or some people refer to it as a QAT. The Quick Access Toolbar is designed to hold shortcuts for making Outlook easy to use. Below the Quick Access Toolbar is a rather large panel that runs the full length of your screen. This large panel is known as the ribbon. The ribbon is, is designed into various tabs. For example, we have a File tab, a Home tab and so on. One of the most common emails or phone calls I get is people losing their ribbon. Now how you can achieve this by accident or otherwise is by double clicking one of the ribbon tabs. For example, if I double click Home, I lose my ribbon. And if I double click Home again, my ribbon returns. Now on the left hand side of your screen you have what's known as the navigation pane. The navigation pane makes it easy to navigate around Outlook. If you don't see your navigation pane, it may be because this button has been clicked, which effectively minimizes the navigation pane. If I click this little button, I'll expand the navigation pane. Now the navigation at this point in time is showing me my mail folders, but down here I can ask for my calendar folders, my contacts, tasks, notes, etc. What I would suggest with regards to the navigation pane is that you always show the folder list. By clicking the folder list button, you not only see the email folders, but you see the calendar, the contacts and all the other parts of Outlook in one navigation pane. So my first recommendation is to make sure you click the folders list button. You can also resize the navigation pane just by dragging this border so that you can see everything clearly within your navigation pane. This panel at the bottom of the navigation pane I believe takes up too much room. So one of the recommendations I've made is that you reduce the height of this section. If I drag this border down, these buttons don't take up so much room. They're still available, but they're little small buttons in a row. I can still focus on the mail side of Outlook or the calendar side of Outlook, but I would recommend that you return to the folders list view. And now I can see everything clearly in my navigation pane. I'll go to the inbox. The next thing I want to look at with regards to the screen is something called the reading pane. The reading pane is very handy because it enables you to see what's inside of an email without having to double click the email. At the moment I don't have my reading pane on so as I click on emails I can't see what's in them. To turn your reading pane on, click on the View tab in the ribbon and you'll see you have a Reading Pane button. The Reading Pane button enables you to put the reading pane at the right or at the bottom of your screen. If I click on the right option, the reading pane appears on the right hand side. I don't actually like the reading pane being on the right hand side because I like to sort my emails by the date I received them, the subject or who sent them. And this is quite difficult when the reading pane takes up this much of the screen. So I'm actually going to recommend that you put the reading pane on the bottom. By putting the reading pane on the bottom, I can easily click these column headings and sort in ascending or descending order by who the email was from. Or I can sort by the subject, again in ascending or descending order, or even the size or the date it was received. So turn your reading pane on, but preferably put your reading pane on the bottom. Now continue with the reading pane, if I go back to the reading pane button, I would go to Options. One of the recommendations I'd make is to untick these reading pane options. I don't like it that Outlook marks an email as read purely because I waited for 5 seconds. I didn't actually read the email, I might have been staring out the window. And I don't like it to mark an item as read simply because I pressed the spacebar. So my recommendation is to untick these options and click OK. If I then want to mark an email as unread, I'll right click an email and I'll mark it as unread. Of course it goes bold and over here to the right of my inbox I can see blue and in brackets that I have one unread email. If I do want to mark this email as read I'll right click it and I'll mark it as read. I could also press Ctrl A and select all the emails in my inbox and right click and mark them all as unread. 
and now I have four unread emails and I can just as easily right click and mark them as read. There are shortcut keys as well. I tend to use Ctrl U to mark something as unread and Ctrl Q or Ctrl Enter to mark an item as read. In addition to the reading pane, I'd also like to um, activate my To Do bar. On the View tab in the ribbon, you'll see that there's a button called the To Do bar. When I click that, I'm going to choose Normal, which turns the To Do bar on. The To Do bar resides on the right hand side of your screen, unlike the Navigation pane, which resides on the left hand side of your screen. The To Do bar is comprised of three parts. The top part is the Date Navigator. The middle part are appointments that are coming up, and these will shift with time, and the bottom part is the task pad. I can also resize this a little bit, and dedicate more space to my appointments, or more space to my task pad. I can also resize to widen, or to narrow. So turn on your To Do Bar, but I'd also recommend that you go back to the To Do Bar button, and that you go into the To Do Bar options. By going into Options, you can say which of the three particular sections in the to-do bar you do or don't want to see. So you may not want to see the task list, or you may, with the use of a tick. One thing I would recommend is that you increase the number of months in your date navigator from one to at least two. The reason being, as we get towards the end of the month, in this case February, I really need to be looking into dates into March. So I'm going to click OK. And now I can see two months in my date navigator, and I can start looking into the next month. And those are the sorts of things I'd recommend with regards to setting up your Outlook 2010 screen.